We welcome you to this session on preliminaries of data encryption, including the DES algorithm. We'll learn the concepts by using Excel spreadsheet. That's the easiest way to experiment and understand. In this session, we'll look into the theoretical concepts. We'll present practical applications in financial institutions in another video. First, we request you to download the below Excel workbook from the given address. The spreadsheet would facilitate easy understanding of this theory. Encryption is the process of converting information or data into a code, especially to prevent unauthorized access. UGETGV is actually SECRET. Wait for some more slides, you will know how. Here are some jargons. Your original message is commonly called plain text. The coded output is called ciphertext or very crudely just cipher. The process of conversion is the algorithm or encryption process. There are some more jargons that we would try to understand in this presentation using the Excel workbook encryption preliminaries. All its contents are not exactly about DES, but it would help us in understanding DES better. In an encryption process, we feed a key and the message into an algorithm of our choice to get the coded ciphertext as output. At the other end, the ciphertext and the same key or different keys are fed into the decryption algorithm to retrieve the original message. We'll begin this session with encryption by shifting position of the alphabets. This is known as shift cipher and also as Caesar cipher. My plain text is secret. In the yellow box, enter 3 as the number of positions to be shifted. In ciphertext, alphabet V is 3 positions to the right of S. Same is the case between E and H. Now you know how V, H, F, U, H, W becomes secret. Enter minus 2 in the same box and the ciphertext shifts to the left. Alphabet Q is 2 positions to the left of S and so on. But uh, this is still not very secure. If we can guess the vowels, then recovering the remaining is easy. Let's move on to permuting, which is another important factor in encryption. Permuting the plain text using a key is an important aspect of encryption. The root word mutation means changing of the structure. In mathematics, permutation is the action of changing the arrangement, especially the linear order. When 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 becomes 3, 5, 4, 1, 2, we change the linear order. So, the difference between permutation and shifting is that in permutation, numbers are jumbled. In uh, shifting, though we move the alphabets right or left, the linear order is maintained. It is left undisturbed. We will now permute our plain text, say, S-U-C-R-E-T, using a key 364512. The contents of plain text will be rearranged as per the numeric order of our key. Third alpha comes first, sixth alpha next, and so on. With this, CTRESE -E becomes our ciphertext. This kind of permutation is one of the key factors in encryption process. Doesn't the ciphertext look more like uh, the scramble game published in newspapers? It's not very difficult to guess original plain text. That's because the block length is small. With just six digit block, guessing is relatively easy. Longer block of text would make this kind of guessing difficult. So, length of the key becomes another important factor in encryption. 
Let us now try a longer key, a longer plain text. We will select a 12 digit key and a 12 digit plain text. Say hello color. Permute the plain text using this 12 digit key. The new ciphertext has become harder than the earlier 6 digit ciphertext. Right? So, longer the key, better the security. Could we improve the security still further? Are we using a single key for the entire operation? What if we try different keys per encryption cycle? Key count is an important factor. We will encrypt the same text but use different keys per cycle. We will derive a set of four keys by shifting first three columns from left to last. But why to derive them all from a single key? Why not use a totally different keys? To use multiple independent keys, is a nightmare. Communicating multiple keys to the decrypting party and taking care not to change their order are all very cumbersome. Single key means less maintenance. We now replace the four keys in key 1, key 2 and so on and get our final ciphertext. Do you wonder what improvement this multiple keys have brought in? We get the same 12 characters but jumbled differently which we have anyway achieved even with a single key. When we permute at ASCII level, the benefits of multiple keys will not be apparent. We will understand it more only if we go down to bit level and when we work with this. Here, we showcase multiple keys only as an available methodology and nothing more. There is another weakness in this operation. Our message itself is a weakness. By looking at the count and occurrence of vowels or alphabets, a linguist could guess the plain text. This aspect is called a statistical structure of the plain text, which must be made as much obscure as possible in the ciphertext. One way to do this is to substitute some part of the message with content from an external source. We use the same multiple keys as before and same plain text. What if we substituted the vowels with another value, say substitute A, E, I, O, U with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We replace E with 2, O with 4, and u with 5. Have you noticed the result? More confusing, isn't it? So, substitution contributes significantly to the security of the encryption process. When we began this session, we told you that this is not exactly this, even though it uses most of the factors of encryption. The reason? This operates at bit level not just this, almost all standard cryptology algorithms work at bit level only. But this example stops at ASCII level. Also, recollect that this is symmetric key algorithm, meaning the same key is used for encryption and for decryption too. Here, you may see for yourself that our encrypting key will not work for decryption. We have two different keys for encryption and decryption. One comes in the fifth place in the original key, so 5 comes in the first place in the decrypting key. Check the remaining decryption keys. Decrypting key is the inversion of the encrypting key. The reason for our two different keys is because here we use the order of the key directly for permuting the plain text. In this algorithm, as we will see shortly, key doesn't get directly entangled with the plain text but used only for the XOR operations. Permutation either for key or for plain text is managed by using different set of P boxes. We will see those things in the next video. For now, instead of a key, just remember its P boxes in this. Point is that by combining the two basic encryption techniques of 
infusion and diffusion which are themselves built on the substitution permutation premise one could completely obscure the statistical properties of the original message from showing themselves in the ciphertext this sp combination for encryption was proposed by claude shannon in 1949 finally cryptology algorithms involve a methodology and a private key in our example if only our vowel substitution and key based permutation methods are known to others then crypto analysts would easily guess the key or the plain text a good cipher structure therefore should keep its dependence on external factors as much less as possible security of a cryptographic object should depend only on the secrecy of the private key security should not depend on the secrecy of the algorithm itself this methodology has proposed by Horst Feistel and Don Coppersmith team in 1973 known as Feistel cipher structure is a published methodology and is known to almost all the key is the only unknown element before we conclude let's understand one more factor the reason for using xr extensively in cryptology instead of and or or if we had used and a then during encryption these are our cipher bits while decrypting we will have to use cipher and key bits and these are the input bits now compare for yourself and notice input bits are not the same on the reverse part if cipher bits and key bits are zero we have problem with deriving the input bits should the input bit be 0 or 1 we have similar issue with or gate 2 if both cipher bits and key bits are 1 we have same problem with deriving the input bit now see for yourself with xor gate we don't have this problem we can easily get back our original input bit without error If cipher is 0, then the input is same as key bit. If cipher is 1, then input is the reverse of the key bit. No confusion. We are now kind of ready to get into this algorithm. Meet you in the next part of the video. Bye.